Hello there, you're watching In The Loop. This is the weekly theme park news show from Park Rush. I'm Tom. Joining me as ever is Josh. Hello there. Hello, Josh. How's it going? I'm very good, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I feel like winter has truly arrived. It's pretty miserable here now. We're recording in the dark. Yeah. Summer's over. I guess it is officially autumn, right? By all measures, whether you uh, use your equinoxes or if you use your three-month cycle beginning with January or whatever. Yeah. So. Equinox, is, that's a Pokemon, isn't it? Yes, what, I think so. What relevance does that hold here? Uh, isn't, isn't it the, like the summer... lunar calendar's pretty old. Uh, I, I reckon it's due for an update. Why not start naming things after <laughs> Pokemon? Uh, yeah, right. Uh, we'll have... Uh, I don't know. Summer is pretty electric, so let's name it Pikachu. Yeah. Uh, autumn yeah, is pretty uh, wet, so that can be. I'm, I'm uh, not a Scorpio. I'm a I'm a Geo dude. I'm, I'm is actually. That, that yeah, Geo dude is a Pokemon. He's a rock type. Uh, he's the rock with the arms, right? Who then evolved yes. into something else? Yeah, uh, Graveler. Graveler, Maybe. sure. I don't mm. remember. He the, he's the first of he he can evolve t like twice, so yeah right. Okay, well, unfortunately, we're not a Pokemon news show. I'd love it if we were, but that's not the case. I I mean, rumor would have it that there'll be plenty of reasons to talk about Pokemon on in a, in a thing park context in you know maybe uh, the years ahead, but as of now. Uh, no particular reason so we should probably move on if you're new here hello as i say this is a weekly thing park news show here on the park rush youtube channel uh, sometimes we do double duty as the main podcast as well depending on how busy we are this is one of those weeks so if you're listening to this on the park rush podcast feed hello uh, next week we're hoping to get into the details of the Halloween offerings at Disney World and Universal Studios. So look forward to that. Uh, if you're watching here on YouTube, then uh, this coming week will also feature the final episode of the Euro Rush travel vlogs. So whether you're listening to us on your preferred podcasting app or watching us on YouTube, there's lots to look forward to in uh, the coming days and weeks here at Park Rush. If you want to keep up uh, beyond just uh, the podcast and the YouTube platforms, then links.parkrush.com is the place to be. That's where you can find all the socials. And if you want to get in touch with the show, podcast at parkrush.com is the best way of doing that. Josh, shall we get into this week's news? Hell yeah. Okie dokie. Well, maybe somewhat lazy of me, <laughs> but uh, I've decided to. Uh, take advantage of my second job. Uh, I mean, I guess it's, it, I guess it's actually my first job, but I dedicate so much time and effort and thought towards Park Rush that I'm starting to see my professional duties as more of a second job. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> to be com to be completely honest, but this comes from Sky News, the premier broadcaster, premier news source in the UK. Yeah. No bias detected. No. And uh, Nemesis. At Alton Towers, the classic roller coaster, the first of its kind in Europe when it opened nearly three decades ago. It's closing for, and I quote, an exciting revamp. Hell yeah. Now, Josh, this is an old favourite of yours. I mean, you sound excited. Are you, are you emotional at all? I, I am a bit emotional. When I first heard the news, I was like, oh, no. Is it, go is it going? Is Are they replacing it? And I was like, say it's not so. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, getting a revamp, which is uh, the best the best news uh, that could be, uh, could come from that, I guess. Um, it's, it's an old boy, old, old girl now. Uh, what, almost a decade, uh, three decades old. Uh, it's my number two ride. Uh, the, uh, roller coaster, at least, um, uh, only recently being overtaken by uh, the Smiler, another Walton Towers ride. Uh, it's it's been up there for so long. Um, it it's, it's due a retrack, 
uh, and I'm glad that it is getting one. Yeah, let's just take a look here at the statement that Alton Towers released. Um, they've said it's going to close on the 6th of November, so at the end of the current theme park season here in the UK. Uh, and Alton Towers say people, therefore, of course, have a matter of weeks left to enjoy its heart-pounding and exhilarating twists and turns. Nemesis, Europe's first inverted roller coaster, will return in 2024 after an exciting revamp. Until then, visitors to the theme park will have just a few more weeks to enjoy its corkscrews and loops before it starts its transformation this winter. Details of the transformation are being kept under wraps for now, with more information to be revealed nearer the time uh, there's also a quote here from kate mcburney the head of product excellence at alton towers resort who said the legendary roller coaster is loved by thrill seekers across the uk and beyond and we want to give fans of the ride the opportunity to experience nemesis in its current form before it closes on the 6th of november uh, alton towers obviously uh, a fair trek for us down south but are, are you tempted to make to make the long journey up there to, to have one more go before it shuts? I am quite tempted. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, oh, it does, does feel very tempting. Will I make it? Who knows? I've uh, got a lot going on these days. Uh, busy weekends. We've got, well, I mean, two podcasts to put out pretty much every weekend. Um, it takes up a lot of time, but uh, maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe I'll make it. We'll, we'll wait and see, I guess. Sounds like some good, uh, some good social content to me, Josh. The final ride on Nemesis. Oh. I just, Ooh. you know, the way from what I've heard, the rumours anyway are that it's getting a retrack. But the way they're talking about it is that it's getting a transformation, a you know, an exciting uh, new, op you know, new experience, and that's in its current. And you know, guests will get to experience it until the sixth of November in its current form. Makes me wonder what they might be doing with it if they're talking like that. Are they? That, yeah. Are they, are they changing stuff? Well, that was going to be my question. Is uh, you know, what do you think the extent of the of the transformation is going to be? I guess there are sort of three buckets you could place it in. Right? There's sort of like uh, they they could do like a Hulk where they essentially recreate the ride as you know it but with new track so that it just runs a lot smoother yeah you know maybe they could enhance it in in uh, in a similar way to hulk as well by perhaps adding onboard audio or something like that maybe update the storyline be behind cool. the ride um or maybe do you see them doing something more akin to like Space Mountain in Paris, where they're not really changing the track in any way, but maybe just giving it a retheme. Or do you see this as being like, are we we're going to completely build a new ride essentially? And whilst it may keep the Nemesis name or a variation of the Nemesis name, to all intents and purposes, this is going to be a brand new ride. What do you think's most likely, and what do you what do you want them to do? Uh. Obviously, it's, it's been shut for quite some time, uh, over a year. Uh, I'm hoping it's a re it's a Hulk esque retrack. Uh, maybe some additional items so like sound and that sort of thing. Um, what I guess could be quite cool is if they uh, if they're going to make any changes would be some sort of uh, launch at the beginning. Uh, kind of Hulk esque as well, actually. You know how Hulk launches you out that tube. Maybe if, if it could do something like that at the beginning, uh, that'd be cool. But I don't think I'd want much past uh, that, really. I think a new coming up with a new ride, you might as well not. You know, don't call it Nemesis. Don't 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 do it to me. Don't do it to the fans. Call it something else if you're going to get rid of it and change it. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, it'll be interesting because obviously you've got Nemesis Inferno at Thorpe Park. Yeah. So, you know, would they do something similar in terms of naming this? If it is something like a retrack, would, you know, they call it Nemesis colon something else or, you know, Nemesis remastered. <laughs> I don't Re rebirth? Re uh... Rebirth, yeah. That's not bad. That's not bad. Um, yeah, I'll be very interested. I mean, obviously I don't really have... 
a great deal of reverence for Nemesis. I've only been to Orton Towers once, mm. uh, which was just after all the COVID lockdowns. Uh, I, but I, I enjoyed it, but it definitely felt its age. So it, it certainly makes sense uh, that it's getting this revamp. Yeah, I don't think and, it's ever um, been done before. So, you know, it's quite impressive that it's still, I mean, it, it, it is definitely feeling its age, but it's quite impressive that it's as comfortable as it is considering its age. You know, if you look at things like Hulk, um, that aged a lot quicker than this has done. Yeah, quite possibly, quite possibly. Uh, and uh, according to uh, this article here, it has been ridden more than 50 million times. Uh, but as well, you say, um, I, I think it's feeling its age by now, of course. But yeah, yeah. As, uh, I think it's it's done good. The girl done good. For and, sure. And uh, hopefully she gets a good send off. And uh, we look forward to seeing what they do at Alton Towers. And, and hopefully they do Nemesis justice. I'm sure that they will. Was this a John Wardley joint? Sure was. This was uh, one of the ones that put him on the map, as it were, in the roller coaster biz. Do you think they'll get him? Get him back in for this uh, revamp? Uh, I think that he'll definitely be there as a consultant. I'd have thought he's still doing consultancy work for them. Uh, he did you know, consultancy work on Smiler and uh, Swarm at Thought Park and that sort of thing. So some of the more recent rides. So uh, I think he might be coming back for the redo of Jewel as well. The uh, uh, kind of scare shooter uh haunted mansion shooter that they used to have at Alton Towers which shut recently so um he's definitely a, still uh about mm. yeah cool okay well let's move on but we'll we'll be sticking with sky news for the next story here which is not strictly theme park related but will be of interest to theme park goers uh, including ourselves yes uh, japan to ease covid COVID. What's do you remember? What, what's COVID, Josh? I, I, from... It's a name I haven't heard for a long time. No, I don't. I can't remember what that is. No, beyond no. me. Anyway, yeah, they're to ease COVID border restrictions for foreign travellers. So Japan will ease its COVID nineteen border control requirements and resume visa free travel from next month. In a bid to foster a recovery in the country's tourism sector, the rules will be changed as of the 11th of October. A cap on the number of daily arrivals, which is currently set at 50,000, and the requirement to adhere to planned package tours will also be scrapped. Japan has enforced some of the strictest border measures in the world since the pandemic began, blocking entries to visitors for two years before it gradually started reopening in June. Uh, so I believe you will still have to show proof of vaccination, full vaccination, and you will also have to test negative for COVID before entry. So it's a similar setup to what it was uh, for me when I went to Florida earlier this year. What was the what were the rules for your family when they went to Florida in August? Were, were um, they still they having to test negative or was it just vaccination or nothing at all? Uh, just vaccination for them. Uh, the youngest nephew who is not fully vaccinated, uh, he might not be vaccinated at all, uh, just due to age. Uh, he had to test, I believe. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you, if you're, if you're fully vaccinated, then yeah, you didn't have to test. Cool. All right. Uh, yeah. So Japan, you know, um, given that you have to be vaccinated and you have to test negative, uh, it's not, you know, uh, a complete free for all just yet. But uh, this is fantastic news. And of course, the theme park angle here is that it's got two Disney parks, we which are widely regarded as two of the very best in the world. And of course, it's got uh, a Universal Studios park, which for now is the only place that has Super Nintendo World. And of course, it's also the only place that has Jaws. Yeah. Uh, it's kind of crazy. Yeah. It's the only it's the only Universal Park in the world that has like the classic quintessential Universal ride that is shut everywhere else. Yeah. And the like kind of future of Universal in the form of Nintendo, which is yet to open anywhere mm. else. So it's kind of amazing. It's kind of the perfect, uh, it, you know, it's got the past and the, and the future 
uh, as well as all the present stuff that you're used to seeing elsewhere, like Harry Potter and Spider-Man, et cetera. So, yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to get to all three of those parks. I was absolutely gutted, of course, for those who don't know. We had a 2020 trip to Japan, all booked and ready to go. And then I think about two weeks before we were due to fly, all the parks started to shut indefinitely for COVID. Various other things that we'd booked started to shut. Yeah. We could have still gone. And a couple of guys that we were going with did still go. But yeah, the, the trip as we had planned it, uh, would have had to have been, you know, adapted and scaled back quite significantly. So we made the difficult decision to kind of get as much money back as we could and 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 not go uh, because we knew ultimately that we would need to go back to do most of what we were going there to do. So yeah. uh, this is great news, and uh, I guess we'll be flying out on the twelfth, Josh. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Squeeze it in there. Uh, go to nemesis uh, the week before and then uh yeah Dis uh, japan and then disneyland paris after that um actually you talk about the parks in japan uh you know there are talks mm. that there's going to be a third disney park coming uh you've got disneyland you've got disney sea uh soon would will be disney air Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know about this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that will have uh, things like the Avatar ride will go into there um, and some other air sort of styled attractions where you can fly and that oh, sort of thing. Yeah. Are they like pretty new rumours or have they been around for ages and I'm just stupid? Uh, the rumours have been around for a while, um, but I think there was talks that maybe uh, the latest rumours I've heard is that they were going to be announced at D23. Uh, and then very last minute they pulled them, pulled the announcement uh, to focus on other things and they'll re-announce it in a future D23. Right, fair. Because I do feel like people really, do, you know, for example, fans of Disney parks in the West, they do find themselves looking a little enviously over at the J the Japanese parks and I do wonder if they were wary of that and whether or not they would be sort of stealing the thunder of the US centric announcements if they then, you know, came in with a, an entirely new park to announce for Japan when yeah. a lot of people think that Disney World could do with a, a whole new park. And that seems like something that they're going to be very reluctant to ever do. Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. look, they're, they're expanding magic kingdom once again right so uh i think a, a new park there a new gate is definitely off of the cards for the time yeah. being at disney world so there are also rumors that there might be a third gate they talk about maybe a third gate coming to california which i don't think is possible but you know potentially actually an extension there instead as well so hmm. yeah. oh okay well, I mean, look, uh, obviously, I, I am really, really keen to get to Japan and do those parks, you know, 2023, who, kn who knows? Uh, who knows? Um, yeah. But it's it's good to know that it is at least viable again. So, yeah, uh, yeah, perhaps that is something we'll be able to start looking into in 2023. But as you say, Disneyland Paris first. Hell um, yeah. I guess we can, we can reveal here and now that we are going back to Disneyland Paris Uh in, in not not long at all we're going in november uh so that'll be good fun there there's uh, some new stuff there since we were last there park rush was born in disneyland paris so yeah. uh we're going you know, home we're going home <laughs> exactly oh, it's gonna be emotional oh yeah uh yeah so uh we'll look forward to that right moving on away from sky news as much as it pains me <laughs> That's not a coded message, by the way. That's purely, <laughs> purely uh, when it comes to this particular show. Uh, let's go to uh, Spectrum News or Bay N Bay News Nine, which is the most uh, American-sounding news network that there ever has been. Yeah, uh, and we've got uh, Bush Gardens Tampa teasing a new ride, uh, which. Um, it's completely news to me. I, I was there, of course. I, I did spend a day at Bush Gardens in, I think it might have been May by the time we were there, rather than April. And 
there was no sign. I mean, maybe I just wasn't paying attention, but I saw no <laughs> obvious sign of a rye being worked it's on. It's been known on uh, before, Tom. Sorry? It's been known for you to not be paying attention before. Oh, uh, right. Yes. Uh, I, I don't dispute that. So that may well have, that, this may just well uh, be another example. Uh, but anyway, this is apparently b- uh, being worked on on the uh, site of Rhino Rally, which has been vacant for a very long time. I, I loved Rhino Rally. Uh, but as I say, it's been gone for a long time. A, a chunk of Rhino Rally, uh, Cheetah Hunt barrels through that space now. Uh, but yeah, there's a you know the, the majority I would say of the the old Rhino Rally area uh, is vacant. So yeah, there's room for something there, and they are working on it. And there is a picture here uh, in the article that was tweeted out by Bush Gardens. What? is going on here as the tweet asks josh what kind of ride do you think this uh this is? definitely looks like a uh well i think it actually mentions it here uh a, that it's believed to be a sort of pendulum style swing ride uh which... oh like um like the one at fantasia land uh was that what that was what was that ride called um, you know what, the Mexico you know I mean? one. Yeah. No, I don't think it's going to be like that. I think it might be something else. Oh, that's Talacan, that by the way. Talacan. Uh, people yeah. are aware of that. So you don't think it's Talacan? No, I think it. I mean, this is looking. Uh, it looks quite big from the you know the structures that are there. I think it's uh, something a bit more. Uh, I don't know, like. Um, sort of pirate shipy maybe i don't know i don't know they've had a part i mean the pirate ship that they've got there sandstorm i don't know what the sort of status of that is it wasn't open when i was there uh, but it was still there so they've already got one of those uh, they've obviously got a drop tower as well with the falcon's fury yeah although that was also shot when i was there so i don't suppose there's really any reason to build another one of either of those so I'm just kind of trying to think, really, of what kind of thrill rides, because it's clearly not a roller coaster, so what kind of thrill rides do they not have at Bush Gardens? That would make sense. Uh, yeah, I'm just, I've am just i just pulled up the list of rides at uh, SeaWorld San Antonio. Um, trying to f- Oh, right. See what yes. we've got there. Uh, a, a pendulum style swing ride is what is, as you say, is what this article talks about. Yeah, I, yeah. People, if if you Google that, folks, you you will have seen one of these before, uh, and I think it's a no from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that looks grim. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Let me Google it. It's it's basically like if Jigsaw from Saw designed oh, a Oh, yeah, one ride. of those. I know those. Uh, yeah. I've been on one of those. Ugh. Did you like it? Uh, it wasn't as leery as these ones, if I'm honest. It's a lot right. a lot smaller. Uh, a lot, a, a, a local, relatively local theme park. Uh, the Breen Sands Amusement Park, I think it was. Um, right. I think it was good fun. Uh, Josh, if you actually click on that, or if you click on the Bush Gardens Tampa Bay account name on that tweet oh, yeah. in the article, which will take you to their Twitter page, you'll see that their top tweet from four hours ago is a bit of video of this ride going vertical. Oh, so you might want yeah, to pull that up for people to see. There you go. There you go. That's cool. It doesn't. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really give anything more away than the picture, to be honest. I but... think it uh, from from the construction in that video there, I'd definitely say it's what um, Bay News is describing it as uh, a big pendulum. A big pendulum, yeah. Looks like a big right. old pendulum, though. It's really big. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. So maybe this will be a sort of early twenty twenty three. Do you do you reckon? Sort of in time for spring. I mean, they've yeah they've been hitting that kind of cadence for a while now. I mean, Tigris was around that time of year as well, and Ein Guazi was around that time of year this year. So, uh, or was it last year? Looks oh, a bit I like Russian. 
waiting for Iron Gwazi was a strange experience. Uh, I feel like uh, I, I think that opened this year. My sense of time is completely broken. <laughs> it looks a bit like Rush at Thorpe Park. Right. Yes, it was this year. Iron Gwazi, March 2022. Right. Yeah. Uh, Tigris, I think, was May 2019. Uh, so yeah, uh, that that kind of that time of year seems like a popular time of year so far as British Gardens are concerned. <laughs> for new rides, April 2019 was Tigris. Uh, yeah, there you go. I mean, yeah, I think that certainly does look like it looks a bit like Rush at Thorpe Park, so maybe it'd be something like that. Um, mm. The video definitely looks very thought, uh, Rush like, right? Yeah, so I have to, and it's just that's just a really basically just a really big swing. So, mm. um, did you go on Rush? I think you went on Rush at Thorpe Park when we went. Uh, I forget. I can't remember, yeah. To be honest. It's just a big swing. No, I can't remember. I think I went on it, yeah. I think Abby didn't. Yeah. I think it was just the two of us. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll keep an eye on that. And uh, we'll wrap up this week's episode with uh, an, uh, a new store at Disneyland themed to Princess and the Frog, which appropriately enough has moved into the New Orleans section of Disneyland. Uh, of course, this is in advance of Tiana's Bio Adventure, which is going to be opening in 2024, replacing Splash Mountain. This shop looks great, Josh. I absolutely love the theming in here. It's called Yodora's Chic Boutique, featuring Tiana's Gourmet Secrets. And yeah, it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, this theme park insider article from Robert Niles says guests will find a variety of kitchen oh, knickknacks, wow. accessories, and cookbooks. Uh, including ones by Leah Chase, whom Disney has credited as an inspiration behind the lead character in the 2009 film. Uh, the store is inspired by Princess Tiana's dressmaker mother, Eudora, and is the next step in giving the New Orleans set film a stronger presence in Disneyland's New Orleans Square, which will be home to the Tiana rethemed Splash Mountain when Tiana's Bio Adventure opens in late 2024 uh so, yeah uh, i mean there are some people in the comments of this article who don't seem to think it looks particularly great but well, i mean as we know comment sections are not a great place to go for balanced takes on things it is primarily people moaning i think this looks really nice i'm i'm a fan of this yeah I think it's really nicely decorated i love this the storefront as well and the signage the font yeah I looks really good like to me I'm, I, I, I'm happy with it i'm all over it uh it's really well. I think it's really well done. Yeah, yeah. A couple of nice pictures there, which I hope um, uh, I hope give the sense of what it looks like. So, yeah, there we go. And yeah, well, well in advance of the ride. So it'll be interesting to see kind of when you might start seeing ride specific merch in there. Might they start to to put some in? Um, you know, in advance of the ride opening. I think that would make sense from a marketing perspective. Uh, yeah. Especially once Splash Mountain has closed uh, to start kind of getting people engaged and excited by by what's to come. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I, yeah, I think, I think I really want them to do kind of um, more grown-up, I guess, merchandise in there, like a... For example, when we went to uh, Disney World back in 2018, uh, I got my mum a Beauty and the Beast uh, kind of tall glass, you know, like a gin and tonic sort of glass, uh, or like a, not gin and tonic glass, but like a, a tall glass, a highball. Um, and it, I, want a, I want a pack of condoms with Louis the <laughs> Crocodile on them. Yeah, preferably. No. Um, Sorry. Like, Sorry, that was inappropriate. He's an alligator. Yes, come on. Um, but yeah, stuff like that, you know, glassware, uh, plates and that sort of which it does look like they have in this in this shot. So, I, you know, something a bit more mature, but not not uh, not R-rated, but, you know, PG-13. Uh, sure, yeah. yes. I want some PG-13 merch in yeah. my Princess and the Frog store. Thank you very much. Yes, please. All right, well, that's going to do it. That's all the news we have for this week's episode of In The Loop. Thank you very much for watching. If you're here 
on YouTube if you're listening on the main uh, podcast feed then thank you for listening as ever hope you don't mind in the loop intruding uh, for I think the third time in the last sort of six seven weeks or so but uh, yeah it's been busy around these parts Josh has obviously been editing all of the travel vlogs uh, I've quite I've had quite a few Larry weekend shifts of late and just looking ahead over the course of the next six weeks or so and we were kind of mapping out what would make sense in terms of a schedule for the main podcast feed we just kind of settled on the fact that it would make sense for us to just plug and in the loop into this slot here and as i say uh for the next two weeks we're hoping we're hoping not confirmed yet but we're hoping that we're going to have a couple of episodes on the halloween offerings at disney world and universal studios orlando so those will hopefully be good fun and then once those are done then we're going to move on to the euro rush trip report episodes which i'm really excited to get into by that point the vlogs will be done so it will be nice to get stuck in in podcast form to our time at europa park and trips drill and fantasia land movie park and efteling yeah. and then by the time we're done with those we'll be getting back from disneyland paris uh, at which point of course we'll be able to do trip reports about our time there so there's lots of stuff to look forward to here at park rush we hope and uh wherever you're listening or watching we hope you enjoy as well as i said at the top of the show the best place to go to keep up with everything is links.park links.parkrush.com and if you want to get in touch it's podcast at parkrush.com uh, thank you very much again stay safe out there take it easy and we'll catch you next time goodbye see ya